The Living Zen Podcast is a gift from the members and associates of the Victoria Zen Center to you. If you enjoy it, please be sure to let your friends know about Living Zen. If you'd like to support our community, here are a few ways that you can do it. Download the Living Zen Podcast app for iPod, iPhone, or Android. You can also purchase additional Zen Talks by Venerable Eshu on iTunes or Amazon.com. One of the most meaningful ways to show your support is by joining our Sangha as an associate. Your commitment of $10 a month will ensure that offerings like the Living Zen Podcast and our online eZendo will continue to be available around the world to everyone with an interest in truly living Zen. To become an associate, please visit our website at www.zenwest.ca and click on the membership tab. Thank you for your support. Tonight I wanted to talk a little bit about two different ways of approaching this practice that we engage in. This tradition or this uh, form that we engage in at the Victoria Zen Center. Uh, For many of us, if not most of us, when we approach practice, uh, it's it's always out of a sort of... um, desire to improve. We want to engage in something that will help us um, maybe be more focused, help us calm our minds, help us um, maybe be healthier people, sleep better, these kinds of things. And in the uh, strongest sense uh, and traditionally, this kind of approach to practice, this approach of sort of healthiness, uh, was referred to as bampu zen. Bampu, uh, referring to it sort of like good health zen. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing uh, uh, bad about practicing meditation or engaging in this tradition for this uh, purpose. But uh, I've spoken a lot lately about there being this sort of hinge point, this uh, transition point in practice where uh, we begin to gain insight into what's going on inside. That it's not just not being able to sleep, but why? What is it underneath all this that when we go to lay down in bed at night, what is it that we're so busy distracting ourselves from? What is it that we're so busy avoiding that keeps us awake? When we're in our day-to-day lives doing our jobs, what is it that's so uncomfortable for us that we uh, distract ourselves, find ways to distract ourselves from doing what we're doing. And in the context of Zen Buddhism, this tendency that we have, these habits, the ways that we separate ourselves from what we're doing, separate ourselves from the things that we're in relationship with, this teaching points that this tendency is the very root of suffering. This fixated attachment, craving, desire to have and to be away from, to be uh, collecting or gathering in things that we think will comfort us or make us more, or avoiding those things that we think diminish us or will uh, harm us in some way. Constantly pursuing this constantly chasing and avoiding, we suffer. And we have to make a decision. We have to make a choice at this point. Whether we back off, back off from the intensity of the practice that we're engaged in that's bringing this stuff up, that's stirring this stuff up in our lives, or we have to roll up our sleeves and dive in fully, 
This point is a very important one in practice. And particularly if you're going to practice with the Victoria Zen Center, this is a very important one. Because we have very few activities which are geared towards just this sort of health Zen. Just this Tuesday evening is a wonderful thing to do. It's a once a week. There are no commitments. You don't have to pay for anything. You can just show up. You sit three 15-minute periods. You relax. You breathe. You have a cup of tea. But you don't even have to have that cup of tea. You can just get your sitting in and leave right afterwards. But everything else that we do is aimed at this other mode of practice, which for lack of a better word, I will call training, Zen training. We have all of these officers doing roles in the Zen center, uh, in the Zendo. We have uh, Jiki Jitsu ringing bells, and we've got Shoji uh, uh, over here who's responsible for the environment and who prepares the tea. But more than this, we have layers upon layers of people whose roles are to take and assume and commit to very specific responsibilities, which have very specific, clearly laid out boundaries. And we agree to commit to these relationships because uh, they squeeze us. In our day-to-day lives, We go about engaging in things really sort of haphazardly. When we see something that we like and we want to do, we think will be helpful, that thing we think that people will appreciate us for, will thank us for, will make us look better, we do those things. And when there's things that are difficult or unpleasant or we don't like or uh, might not get recognized, we don't do those things. And so each one of these roles in training is broken out and very clearly laid out the responsibilities. These are the things that you do. These are the things that are not in your sphere of responsibility. And so when we step into them, when we commit to these training roles, we feel locked in. Because oftentimes we have to do the things that we find uncomfortable or difficult. And we have to not do things which we think are uh, uh, more recognizable, where we would get more ego gratification out of doing those things, where people would think we're nice or thoughtful or all those kinds of things. And when we find we put ourselves in these training roles, there's a great phrase um, uh, from the Muman Khan that says, uh, he stuffs up the monk's mouths and the demon eyeballs squirt forth. When we find ourselves in this sort of limited position, sometimes the mind just goes crazy. Sometimes we find ourselves getting all emotional, getting angry because people aren't doing what we think they should be doing, having difficulties in communicating with one another because things just aren't going the way that they are, they should, or what we think they should be. When we step back, uh, it's very easy to see that in the grand scheme of the world, whether or not so-and-so pours the tea this way or whether or not so-and-so rings the bell uh, uh, properly, quote-unquote, they're not such big issues. And the point is, when we commit to these roles, it's not the roles that are so important, but how we respond. What happens to that little I am self when we put it into this container, into this structured environment? What are the things that we grasp onto? What are the things that we run away from? What are the things that we have to force ourselves to engage with? And what are the things that it's very easy for us to dissolve into? When do we lay down when it's time to stand up? And when do we stand up when it's time to melt away. For many people, uh, this doesn't match their idea of what meditation is supposed to be about. Meditation, isn't that supposed to be about relaxing and 
getting happy and uh, being calm and all this kind of stuff. This practice is about awakening. Awakening to who we truly are. Awakening to our true nature. This practice is liberation from suffering. And this just doesn't magically happen. It doesn't drop out of the sky, but it comes as a uh, result of awakening to how it is that we fixate self, where it is that we get stuck, how it is that we make mistakes and hurt people, hurt ourselves. And this doesn't happen in the absence of interaction. One friend of mine in practice says, Rinzai Zen uh, is a lot less like yoga and much more like hockey. We bump into each other. We bump into ourselves as we engage in this practice. It's not for the faint of heart. But when we go through this process, a process that has been likened to putting sharp rocks in a bag together and shaking it until they come smooth, we more and more clearly see that this self that we talk about in Zen isn't a conceptual idea. The fixations that we have on who it is that we think we are aren't just ideas that it's so easy to drop, to let go of. We find that these are like beliefs. They're real. We hang on to them because our life depends on it. This is why liberation, awakening, Kensho, these moments of clarity are called deaths. Uh, a great realization is called a great death. Because that sticky self that we adhere to drops away. And we find ourselves born into a new life, born into a new moment, born into a totally new experience of what it is to walk and breathe and sit in this world. So uh, I've seen a lot of people lately, uh, members of the Zen Center, uh, banging against each other lately, and and it seems to really be upsetting. Oh, so-and-so said this, and oh, that hurt my feelings, and oh gosh, so-and-so did that, and that wasn't the way it was supposed to go. And maybe people feel like, oh, I don't know what's going on in practice, but geez, it's not that peaceful way it used to be. And as a, a Zen teacher, sitting here watching this go on, I can only smile. Because finally, finally, uh, people who have been coming for one, two, five years are starting to Uh, perceive, to delve into, to become immersed in what it is to engage in Zen training. Maybe a little sitting, it can uh, lower your blood pressure. It can uh, provide clarity in your mind on a day-to-day basis. It can help you sort out some small things in your life. But if you really want to clarify this great matter, if you really want to clarify your nature, if you really want to shed light on who it is that you truly are, if you really want to be liberated from suffering, this practice is not easy. This practice is not uh, without its challenges. And those challenges aren't just mental puzzles. They're not just little uh, questions that come up from time to time, but a visceral reaction. You will want to run away. You will want to not sit. You will want to not engage in conversations with people. And to engage in training is to experience this and taking a breath step into it wholeheartedly.
Thanks for listening to the Living Zen Podcast. If you follow Living Zen through iTunes, I would very much appreciate it if you would take a moment to let me know what you think about it by rating or reviewing the podcast so that new listeners can also hear what you have to say. Thank you for your time and for your support.